what would happen if you put all the automated technologies together and made a CG short that wasn't animated and wasn't modeled by hand. Modeling of faces, the indoor location and costumes was attempted using laser scanning. Characters body and facial animations were recorded using a motion capture system. We're using simulations for organics like fire, cloth, water, wind. This will be one of the coolest projects you've ever seen. My name is Daniel Morrison. I work for a company called Remnant Studios. Um, and we are creating a vendor showcase project that we are using to create an amazing CG production. Um, the goal of that CG production is to uh, use as little traditional hand animation or hand modeling as possible and rely heavily on uh, automated processes like motion capture or laser scanning um, to acquire 3D models and that sort of thing. We used uh, two laser scanners, the uh, laser line probe with the scan arm and uh, Pharaoh's uh, LS scanner. Uh, both uh, the line probe was used to scan faces of performers to turn them into 3D characters. Um, and then the LS was used to scan an entire location and turn it into a computer generated or CG set. We can use this data any time in the future if we want to use these characters on another production or use the same set in a totally different production the value is there and the quality is is uh, is is great so we could use it over and over and again and ideally we'd like to eventually be doing uh, having libraries of sets um, that we can reuse as much as we need we would have either had to image model the whole thing from scratch which is just take a, a bunch of photos and use that as references to basically build the geometry from scratch by hand. Um, or we would have just built it by scratch, uh, 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 from scratch by hand, just out of our imaginations, have to do concept art and then just build it from there, uh, having a team of modelers, um, texture artists, and putting all that together. In this case, we use a laser scanner and we're able to get the location and then we can use photos as, as uh, textures. The Ferro laser line uh, scanner and the scan arm gave us a great degree of detail. Um, we were just kind of using, using it in a, um, a run and gun type of an approach where we have the, the people, the performers, staying as still as possible and we're scanning them. Um, but it has a great deal of accuracy. Um, then the LS was used uh, we love it because it's got a, gr a great range, so I can scan a larger area of uh, 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 location and uh, create larger 3D models as sets, so the distance primarily for the LS. Well, the LS uh, uses an infrared laser, and uh, it scans using a, a laser that's running at 768 nanometers, which is bright at the beginning of the infrared wavelength. It's an invisible light, scans the area at uh, very high speed, and it basically collects a point. Um, every uh, millimeter or less. Uh, what we get is a point cloud, and and the uh, we're usually collecting like millions of points. So typically, we'll have like a 41 million point cloud scan. It was really interesting scanning with the Pharaoh scanner, the LS. Um, it's a lot of data. I'm a resolution nut, of course. I love more data, more accuracy. Because uh, I can always compress it, always optimize it on the on the on the back end or, or at the end of the project when it's uh, being kicked out to my 3D modeling app, or, which is great. It's one of the reasons you're looking for it is to have all that data. But the possibilities of what you can accomplish in a short period of time are greatly enhanced, and um, it's really re it's very reasonable uh, to see how you could have a huge uh, cost benefits from a pipeline like this with a Ferro scanner.